Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. If you're new here, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a ton. In this video, we're working on a new feature for our social media app, and we're gonna build chat requests. So if you've ever used any of the large social media apps like Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, they all have chat requests, which protect the users. So hope you guys are excited. Let's jump right into this. So I just realized when you click view zero comments, Obviously, there's no comments, so that doesn't really make sense. We could at least show a message, though. Like, hey, there's no comments. That would be just a very quick UI change. If we go back to the post comments index, we could do a check for right here. Let's go inside of this div and let's just check if at post.comments.any. Then we are going to render the comments like normal. We can do an else case, we can render a message because there's no comments. I'm going to do a P, text center, text Excel. There are no comments yet. Oh, and then we could also have a link to create a comment. So I can put a link to. How about I put that on the next line? Link to. Uh, Create a new comment, and this is going to go to the new post comment path. We'll pass in the post. Let me take a little bit of styling, just a little bit. See what this looks like. So now, when we click view zero comments, whoa! Okay, the button is a lot larger than I expected. Let's do MX Auto. Maybe I'll do a green. See what it looks like. View zero comments. Now it says there are no comments yet. Create a new comment. And as you can see, the beauty of turbo frames is that you can use that and it updates the UI still. You can still press cancel. Everything just works beautifully. Or actually, we could also, instead of putting the button here, we could put it down here. But I think I don't mind it here because it's kind of like you realize, okay, like there's no comments. But also, you might, when you're viewing the comments, you might want to be able to add a comment instead of having to like leave a comment or view comments. So that is a kind of a, an interesting thing. So maybe what I'll do, instead of putting the create new comment button there, I'll just go back to the new. I'll take the styling for this send comment. Come back here. Actually, I don't know if this is faster, but I'm going to replace the submit with link to, and I'm going to replace the path, new underscore post underscore comment path. Yeah, I probably could just change the styling on the other link. It's the same thing. Uh, create a new comment. <clears throat> but what this is going to do is it's going to put the button down there at the bottom. All right, so what I'm thinking for this chat feature is we'll have a link to get to the chats page. And then once you're on the chats page, you can search up users by their username and then click on user to send them a chat request. So it'll be very similar to Instagram if you've ever used that to message people. So let's get right into it. The first thing I'm going to add is a button to get to the chats page. And then we'll also have to generate the controller and views for the chats page, of course. So let me start off with the link. I'm gonna put it right up here in the nav bar, right next to this user link. I'll put a little button for the chat messages. So we're gonna need an icon for this. I usually get all my icons from Hero Icons because they just have a lot of free icons that work really well and they have the different states too. So if you need a mini or micro solid outline, they have all of this for you. So what I'm gonna look up is I'm gonna look up chat. And I'll find a good chat message icon. It really could be any of these. Uh, maybe we'll do this one, like the two chat bubbles. That looks cool. So I'll copy the SVG. And then let's go back into the code and head over to the layouts navbar partial. And take a look inside of here. So this is where we're going to add that chat button. I'll probably add it right to the left of this P tag for the username. Just boom, drop the SVG in. 
And then I'll wrap this with a link. Add a link to. And then for right now, I'm just going to do a hashtag for a placeholder. Let's indent this. All right, cool. So this is our link. It should show up correctly if we reload. All right, it's, I mean, it's showing up, but of course, I don't want it to be on top. I want it to be side by side. And I also want to change the color. So what we'll do is on this top level div, let's add a flex class. And we'll do item center. So that should center these items. And then if I want to do gap, I could just put it on here. That's perfect. And it looks like everything still works good. So now I just need this chat icon. Oh, another thing to realize when you click, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't close the drop down, but it shouldn't matter because we're gonna go to a new page anyways. And the reason why I'm saying this is because of this. This code right here is checking. Basically, this would. All right, so you know what? Let's add another div. That's the other option. It's probably a better idea just so we don't interfere with that drop down too much. So we'll take that flex class and everything and I'll instead put it on the top level div. So now we have the link inside and then we have the relative drop down. And those are our two items in this new div. I feel like that'll work better. And then you'll see what happens if I click over here, it does close the drop down. All right, so now let me make this icon a little bit larger because right now it has a small size size six, I'll change this to width 12. And then I'll make the icon lighter by doing text gray 100. If we reload, this is now what we see. All right, not bad. Although we might actually want a solid. A solid icon looks a little bit better. Let's drop in this new SVG. Uh, I'm still gonna have like the same styling. I just wanna see what it looks like. Let's reload. All right. Yeah, I do kind of like that better, but I wanted a little bit smaller. So instead of width 12, let's do width 10. Reload. I mean, yeah, that's pretty good. So then when you hover on it, of course, I want it to take you to the chats page. So it might be nice to have a hover state at least. So on this SVG, we could add hover. We could do the scale 105. We could also do hover text grade 200. So it gets like slightly darker and it kind of bounces so you can tell that's definitely clickable and then when you do click right now it's going to this pound sign hashtag so of course i want to bring this to what i'm thinking is this will bring you to the chats page where normally it would show all of your chats but then you also have the option at the top to search for users to chat with that seems like a pretty good flow so let's go ahead and create that new controller well let's go back into the code we're going to do this one by hand we could do a, uh, a Rails G controller command, but I just find that I always have to change everything anyways. So a lot of times it's just easier to write the code by hand. So we'll start by setting up the route. Let's go to the config routes.rb and we need a new route for chats. It's not going to be inside of the post uh, namespace at all. So it's going to be separate than that. Let's just add a resources chats. And for right now, we're only going to do the index. So only index for chats, and then we're gonna need a matching controller. So let's go to the controllers folder, create a new file, which is gonna be the chats controller.rb. This is gonna have a class chats controller, which will inherit from application controller. And then inside of here, we can do the index action, just like that. And now since we're not gonna be defining anything inside of this action yet, we can close it off with a one-liner. This is a little trick. In Ruby, you don't have to do this though. If you're more comfortable with this for an empty method, I understand. Because this the semicolon thing is kind of weird. But I'm gonna do that. Now we do have the chats index. Now we just need a matching view. So let's go to the views and we need a new folder. Let's create a new folder called chats. And then we have to make the matching file for the action, which is index. So do it index.html to ERB. And boom, this is our chats page. So right now, of course, it doesn't have anything. Let's try to make some very simple, just a very simple div and some text. So I'll do flex call item center padding top 24. So that's our container to center everything. And then what I'll do is I'll put h1 
We do a tev, text 7XL, text grade 100. Close out to H1. Set your cats. Reload. Now we should be able to test this. So if we click the chat icon. Oh wait, it still doesn't bring us because we still need to update the navbar partial. So let's go back to views, layouts, navbar. And we need to change the link to pound sign to actually go to the chats path. So that's the matching path for the index row. Now one quick trick, this is more for beginners, but if you guys are wondering how to find your routes, it's very easy. So you just go into the terminal, you can run Rails routes, and it'll show you all of your routes that are defined in the app. And you can kind of scroll up and take a look. So we have, these are the helpers. See on the left side, that's what you do inside of your views. You can use these URL helpers. You just have to add a underscore path to the end and then pass in the needed parameters. And then here's how they're defined in the actual setup, like for the routes. So it'd be like slash post slash post ID and then slash the different sub routes. But we should have a new one for chats. So a way that you can search through your routes, you can say Rails routes and then you can pipe them into grep just like this and then put some text that you want to search for let's search for chat now it'll only return the routes that match this and as you can see we have this chats route which just goes to slash chats and that is why you do the chats path like this and there's no needed arguments into this cool now we can go back and our chat link should work so if you click Boom, we're now on the chats page. Oh, that text is way too light. That's funny. So let's go back to chats index and darken the text and make it a little bit smaller. Let's reload and boom, just like that, we are on the chats page. That's perfect. That's how easy it is to create a new page. Although of course that's not the whole feature. This is just the start. So now on the chats page, normally it would show all of your chats but it would also show a way to find users to chat with. So that's probably what I'll do is I'll add like a search bar. That's the first thing. So right at the top of your chats, we could just set up a form with, this is gonna go to a URL that we do not have to find yet. So what it's gonna be is it's just gonna go to, it's gonna allow us to search the users Let's go back to config routes and we have to define this new route. So I might nest it inside of chats, but I don't, I don't want to use it. I don't want to actually do a nested resource. That's different. I kind of want to do a namespace chats. So it's nested, but it's, it doesn't require you to pass in a chat object. And then we could do a resources user search or how about let's just do a singular resource user search only the create action now because when you do a resource or resources they always try to make the controller plural and that's fine like user searches controller could be fine but i want to specify the controller name because you can't so i'm going to do controller is the user search controller so it's singular now what this is going to look for in the route, we're going to have a chat slash user search action. Now this is probably a good time to go and check the routes again, because that might look kind of confusing, but if you look at what it generated, all it did is it added, see like the chats prefix underscore the user search action, see, and it's going to be a post request. So you have to post here and then we can return whatever we want. Cool. That's just what I'm looking for. Now I'm going to create the matching controller. So let's go to the controllers. We need a chats folder for the namespace. So let's create a new folder called chats. And then inside of it, we'll create that user search controller dot RB. Now inside of this, first of all, we're going to need to namespace it. So let's do the module chats. And then inside of it, we'll do a class for the user search controller. And this is going to inherit from the application controller. And we're only going to have a create action. Cool. 
So inside of this search, we're going to expect we're going to get some sort of query, right? And then we are going to search the user model. So like user, you know, somehow search by username. So let me quickly go set up the form and then we can handle the code inside of this create action. So let's go back to the views chats index and let's set the URL on the form width. So this is going to go to the chats underscore user search path. And then inside of the form, we can add really all we're going to do is just one parameter for the for the query for the username. So let's do f dot label. I'm just going to call it Q colon Q as in query. And then for the text on the label, I'm going to say search for users to chat with. And underneath, let's do a text field for this Q because I don't want them to search too much. Uh, like a, not a text area since it's just a username. And we can do some class, we can do some styling on this. So let's do around the large with full. Take a look at what this looks like. All right, not bad. We didn't even add a max width. We probably could do that here. Look at div class, max width, 5XL, max auto, something like that. Just give it a little bit of max width. All right, that's actually pretty large, so maybe I'll go 2XL, a little bit smaller. And of course, I mean, it's not a bad start, but it's also not that pretty. We could change the background color. PG gray 200. Cool. I mean, yeah, it's not bad. Uh, I'll add a little bit of margin between that header. The margin top is eight. All right, search for users to chat with. So you can just search just like this. And then we also need the submit button, which I'm really tempted to do as an icon. We can look on here for like a submit, which it might just be like check. You click the check. I'm going to copy that SVG and we can add in our button. So to do this, I want to put the button over the text field. So I'll show you guys a quick CSS trick. You can wrap your text field in a class of relative or I should say a div with a class relative. And then inside of this div, we can add, actually it has to be a button tag. And then we could put our SVG inside. And then on the button tag is where you'd add your class absolute top zero, right zero. Let's take a look at what this generates. So now we have a button with a check icon. And of course, we can change this styling a little bit like two, zero, four, right, right, four to kind of try to center it. And it looks a lot better. We can also change the styling on this. Go like with 10. I think that's a little bit too large. Eight. And you might have to mess around with this positioning as well if you change the size. I mean, yeah, that's not bad. And what I might do. Actually, I might just say like top zero, right zero, but then I'll do height full width 20. And I just want to see what that looks like. If we could have like a little section. Yeah, we do. So that see how that we can have like a little part just for this button. Let's do width 16 and I want to add the rounded. Rounded large right. Or we could also just put an overflow hidden. Do overflow hidden on here and then rounded large on the div on the container and then see you have we still have the rounded that works you could actually do rounded full if we wanted to have that full effect although for some reason it doesn't work on this Ooh. oh because i only did it on the text field not on the Top level div. So let me remove the rounded from this text field. That doesn't really matter. Although I guess it does matter for the border now. <laughs> let me take that back. Apparently, you can see how the border got messed up. Now, if we reload, the border is fine. So that's kind of interesting. 
All right. So now I want to be able to hover on the checkbox. Also, the check icon is not positioned correctly. So I want to do. I think I can do flex item center just if I center. Even though I'm also doing absolute, I think you can do absolutely flex at the same time. And then I want to hover on this. Well, actually, I'm going to change the styling up a lot. So it's BG Gray 500. That's too much. So let's go 300. Hover is going to be BG Gray. Or how about BG Blue? Go add some color. A few splashes of color when you hover. Yeah, that's not bad. All right, one weird thing is that the border, see how the border stops here? It looks kind of funny. So really to fix that, we might want to take the border off of the text field. Well, that's one way to fix it. So we can say border zero, reload. Hey, now there's no border. Although there's still, when you click on it, there's still like a little like sliver. Wait, I need to get rid of these suggestions. Ignore these guys. I feel like they're going to get me... <laughs> You know what it is? It's all like the history from my queries. Maybe I'll change. Let's change the queue to search. Still showing all of my past search results. <laughs> Wait, let's change it to query. Just like that. I wonder, can I turn off, turn off autocomplete on text field? Oh, it's literally just do autocomplete off. I was saying, I'm having all these random things popping up in my in that text field. So let's do autocomplete off. Because for username, that doesn't even make sense to have to save the history. Okay, perfect. No more history. So what I want to do now is see how there's that little bit, you can see a slight sliver of like some sort of color. That's because of the tailwind ring. So Tailwind uses a ring instead of the border. So we have to say focus ring zero. So on the focus state is when it's getting applied. And now as you can see, it looks perfect. See, no border. Although the only problem is for accessibility. For someone with who needs it to be accessible, you need everything to highlight when you do the tab. And there's a few things that aren't. I'm pretty sure you should be able to click with the tab. I don't really know how to do. Anyways, we can figure this out later. Accessibility is pretty big. All right, so what I want to do... Actually, the funny thing is... I probably don't even want a checkbox or a submit because a lot of times on these things, when you type, when you're searching for users, it's more of like... I also realized I wouldn't want to check. I want a magnifying glass. So that's the first thing. We should probably be using a magnifying glass instead of a check. Because check is for when you're like checking a box or, you know, doing something that needs a check. But this doesn't really seem like a check sort of situation. All right, that's way better. Just having the search icon there is so much better. But then what I was thinking is, we're probably gonna want to add search as you type or search as you type. So as you start typing like someone's name, it would pop up suggestions underneath, which kind of invalidates the search icon. Like we don't even need that, which is kind of funny because we just spent this time building the search icon. Let's leave it though, just in case you know, just in case we want that. Let's leave it since we already did the work. The last thing I want you guys to see though is uh, the trick with the text field so since we added this new icon the text field is still the same width which means your text can kind of get hidden behind the icon and to fix that you can add padding right on the text field and give it enough padding to match the width of the button so since that's 16 we could do padding right 16 and it should be perfect that's why i'm just typing around a bunch of random text and as you can see now your text will not overflow behind the button it seems perfect. And if you wanted a little bit more, you could give it like 18. Obviously, the 16 with this. See, now they're. Oh, we have to reload. Fantastic. Actually, 
I don't think there is a padding rate 18. Probably 20 will work though. All right, there we go. See, there's like a little bit of space between the text field and the icon. So that's awesome. Now let's move into the search. So what would happen is every time you would type, we want to hit this controller and then inside of the controller, we can do the query and find users for that query. So let's start with sending the request because right now we don't. And actually let's save the type as you, search as you type it might even be another functionality feature that we add on later. I think it's also good for you guys to understand the basics of how forms work. So if you're new to Rails, this might even be better because I don't even want to mess with JavaScript too much. JavaScript is confusing and annoying. So we'll do that later. Search as you type. Let's just start with like, if I search some guy's name, like Indigo, and I press click, I want it to pop up all the Indigos on the social network. So that's our first challenge. And we don't have to worry about JavaScript. So we can get right into coding. So if we go to the terminal real quick, we can see that there was a post request to the user search. It's just nothing got returned. So that's all we're doing. We need to do the query inside of this user search controller. So what I want to do is I want to do a binding dot B, which I'm pretty sure is how you pry inside of Rails default. If we go, oh yeah, look at that debugger can attach via Unix domain socket. I don't actually know how to connect to the debugger. But it's part of the Ruby debug. I just need to figure out how I can use it. RDGB. Maybe it's just maybe you just go to another thing and just do this. Oh wait. I mean art so that's Ruby debug. So am I inside now? Let me check the params. No, there's nothing. Wait, that didn't work. Alright. Yeah, I don't know how to connect. I think someone someone put a comment on how to connect to the debugger. Remote debugging. This is how you do it. Mm, so that's what you do. So I figure out the port first, then I come over here and I say attach to the certain port. Although, I want to guess it's this. Mm, no, okay, no, 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 that, that wasn't right. Debugger can attach via Unix domain socket. How do I do that? Ruby on Rails. I'm just going to figure out this quick thing. It says you'll be able to open the debugger in the terminal window where you're remotely connected with this. Let me try to RDGB dash AN. It actually worked. That was surprising. So I'm going to try to get the params queue. And just like that, you see it's indigo. So if I was to query for users, maybe I should zoom this in. If I, should, if I was to query for users with the username params queue, that's how you would do it. Although obviously there was no user with that username. So that's where the trick comes in, where maybe I was looking for another user. So let's see how many users we have. First of all, we have 21. And if we want to pluck the username, we can view all of our usernames in the app. This is how many we have. 
So there was a couple indigos, but they didn't show up because this query is looking for an exact match. When you query like this, it's looking for ex an exact match. But we can fix that. We can make it no longer look for that match. How do I clear this? I don't know if I can clear it. Anyways, what we do is we'll say user dot where, and then we'll pass in a string to do a custom SQL query. And we'll say username like question mark. Now the reason why we're doing question mark is that's how you interpolate. They call it um, it's like how you make your SQL safe. Because I could just go like this, for example, I could interpolate the string directly, but this is a security vulnerability. If you ever see something like this, where you're allowing user input directly into a SQL query, that's very bad. We need to escape this parameter, and that's what using the question mark would do. We do question mark and then add a second parameter, and that's where we would add in the value. Params Q. Although usually what I do is I add percents around it. And I know that that has something to do with SQL. Wrapping text in percent signs SQL. Alright. Yeah, obviously that doesn't give me the answer, but that I know that's important for some reason. All right, let's see if this works. So we did the query. We can count it and we have three different users that came up for that query. So now if we pluck the username, you'll see it was all user accounts with the matching indigo name. That works perfectly. And then obviously if you change the query to whatever, it would still work. So here's our users. I'm going to copy this query right here and put it inside of the create action. That's the query. We're going to set at users equal to this. So we have our new users defined. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to respond with a turbo stream. Format.turbo stream. That's what we're going to do. Actually, we can do a shorthand method. That's like the old way of doing it, I guess. I usually just go like this render turbo stream. And what we're going to do is we're going to update user results. That might be like an ID. And then we can pass partial. I wonder if we can render a collection right here. I don't know if we can. So let's try to render a user partial and a collection at users. Now, I have no idea if this will work. But what that would be expecting is on the chats page back here, we should have a matching div ID equals user results. Let's do some styling on this flex flex call gap for that's just going to get it ready for when we have the user results. And now we need that partial. So inside of the chats, Actually, we need to create a new folder because that was inside of chat's user search. We're expecting to render this partial user. So it's expecting that to be inside of a folder called chat slash user search. Uh, so let's go over to the views and create that. So chats, inside of chats, we need a folder user search. And then inside of here, we need the action. So, or actually not the action. That is one, it, we could use a turbo stream, instead of rendering inline, you can use a turbo stream response, which means it's a template that matches the method like create.turbostream.erb. That's what DHH always says to use. And it works very well because you can pass multiple turbo streams at once. So it works way better. But I don't know if we need it. So maybe I'll just leave it like this for now. All we need is the partial. So I'm gonna create that new file underscore user dot and then inside of here it's really just a search result so whatever sort of styling you think would look good for a search result i'm just going to go with the same styling i've been doing on this app like a slightly gray div with some rounded and some padding and then inside of it 
you can print out the user dot username. We'll put this in a span. All right, now let's see if it works. So let's go back. Oh, we're still inside of the pry. So let me try to get out. Exit. Quit. There we go. You know what? I like that debugger. It's kind of weird, but I like it. All right, so let's click on chats. So now I'm going to try to search for myself. And it worked. Look at how look at how smooth that is. So the only the only critique I think was like a little bit of padding, right? Because it's just directly on my search. So let's go back to index. Let's add that margin top four. Reload. Let me try that again. So I search up indigo, press enter, or press the search. And boom, we have our search results right here. And then I think when you click on it, or we could either have like, I think it'd be better even to have like an icon. And when you click on that, it would bring you to the chat where you can create a chat request by sending a message. That's usually what it's like on Instagram. So let's go ahead and get a new chat icon. We can figure out, do we want an outline or a solid? I think an outline, and I'll just grab the chat bubble one like this. And inside of that user partial, right back here, I'm going to add justify between, which means it'll push whatever else I put into this element all the way to the end. And I guess really it'll be a link to. And I'll do that same pound sign for the placeholder until we define what route this is going to. And then, boom, put the icon in, reload that page. Although, actually I just need to search, and there we go. So we have this little icon here, and then we get out of hover state. You know what might, might be fun is if we take the solid one and we use that as a hover state. So we copy this SVG. Although I think I can fill it too. Let me see if I can fill it because then we wouldn't have to do that. If I could say fill blue 500 and it actually fills the inside, then yeah, it does. Check it out. So all I have to do is just put that on hover. So hover, we will fill it with blue. This app's going to be so colorful. Check it out. But if you wanted to, let's say, like switch to the one with dots when you hover, that could be interesting. I don't know. All right, so now oh, let's also do the scale thing. Scale 105. So like slightly, slightly kind of gets bigger. Although that didn't seem to work. Buffer scale. Interesting. All right, whatever. For some reason, that doesn't seem to be working. But let's move on. So now when you click chat, what is that going to do when you click chat? Well, that is going to probably bring you. It's going to bring you to somewhere, right? I think. It would almost be like the chats page, but it would be like the request page. I'm just trying to figure out where I want to put that. Because we have a user search controller. I might just do another controller, honestly. Although I don't want to have too many, but let's let's just get right into that. We could add another resource for chat requests. We could actually make this a resources chat requests. We could have an only new controller. We don't have to define the controller actually because it's just using the plural by default. So we have a new chat request and that could be the page that we go to. So when we click here, it's actually bringing you to the new chat request page, but then we'll pass in the user that you're trying to chat with. Cool. So what we're going to need is a matching controller for this. So inside of the controllers, chats folder because we have the namespace we're going to create another file and we'll call this chat request controller.rb 
Now we're going to need that same module chats. So up at the top. And then inside of that, we'll have the class for chat requests. Controller is going to inherit from application controller. And then inside of here, we're just going to have a new action. Cool, cool, cool. And of course, we need a matching view. Since the new page is going to be a page that you're going to go on, we need a matching page. So let's go inside of the chats. Actually, not user search. We need another folder to match our controller, which is chat requests. So now we have a chat, a chat slash chat request folder. Inside of there, I'm going to create a new file called new.html.erb. And this is the template for that new chat request page. So let's do div class flex flex call item center. Let's do the same, same old container for all the pages. Let's do an h1 text five excel. Let's just say chat with and then we'll put the username. So at user dot username. And of course, we need to make sure that we have the user defined, which right here in the controller, we don't have a user defined. We can just say like at user equals user dot find. And then we'll pass in a user ID. Just like that. That's how we're going to find the user. So now to hook all of this up. So that we can see if this even works. Let's go back to the user search underscore user partial right inside of here. And we'll change that placeholder to go to the new chats underscore chat request path. And the only thing that we're going to pass in is the user ID, which will be equal to user ID. Just like that. And we can test if this works by doing another search. <laughs> I didn't see any errors, so that means it works. And we click. Boom. It works great. So the only thing that you guys can notice is the URL might be a little bit weird, but honestly, this looks that looks fine to me. That looks like it makes sense. You're doing a new chat request with this user ID. And yeah, this is what it would look like. Then we're gonna have it would basically be the same thing as the chat, except for you get you only get to do one message and then you have to wait until they respond. It's kind of like interesting setup, but let's let's get into that. So let's go over to the chat request new page and we basically have a form which will go to, I think we'll just put a create action. So it'd be like chats, chat request path. Close up this form. Honestly, the worst thing about my keyboard is doing these straight lines. It's so hard to figure out because I have this. I kind of have a worse keyboard right now than I used to. Although I still have it over there. It's just really loud. It's kind of hard to use. All right, so this is good. The only thing is we need to change the routes to allow a create action for the chat requests as well. So create. There we go. And then the chat request controller. Let's define our create action. Boom. And then the form, all it's going to be, it's going to be like a, you know, the first message. That's all it's going to be. So we do F dot label. Um, body, I don't know. F dot text area body. F dot submit. So very, very simple form. Let's reload. This is what it looks like. Of course, it's very, very, very ugly. So let me style this. Let's put a div. Actually, I could probably take that styling from right here. Here we go. A little bit less work for me. I have that max width, but I still need to style this whole thing. Like the text area it needs to be class lock. Reload. There we go. And then save, of course. Would rather be something like send message. And then we need some styling. As far as styling. <laughs> ah, I really want to go just take some styling from another page. <laughs> I'll steal that submit button. Ah, oh, it didn't work. I'm just getting lazy. Instead of send comment, it's send message. Oops. Let's reload. 
There we go. Just need a little bit of margin. So for that, I'm going to do a BR this time. Yeah, there we go. So here you can put your first message. Basically chat with this, although let's say request to chat. Request to chat with this user. And then in the text area, I'll just put a placeholder. Or actually, maybe we should do it for the label. Uh, send your first message, or send a message to user if they accept your request, you can chat with them. All right. <laughs> Although this might be too much. This is kind of overwhelming a little bit. I think it's because this text is a little bit wrong. So let me say, request a chat. Or maybe I'll say start a chat with the user, with Indigo Tech, and then you're allowed to send a message. If they accept your request, you can chat with them. Okay, fine. I'll be like, hey, bro, I love your content. It means a lot to me. It helps me to learn how to be a cool person. <laughs> and then when you click send, of course, I want that to submit the chat request to the user. Which right now we don't have, we actually don't really have that set up. Chat request. So inside of this create, that's where we're posting to. We are going to need to actually let's pass. We're going to need to pass that user ID in as well. So if we go back to the new page, I'll just do it in the URL. So in this path, I'll just say user ID, user underscore ID. It's going to be the at user ID. So that's an option right there. And then when you press create, what's going to happen is we'll create a new model for the chat request. So actually we do need that model. I'm going to go into the console real quick and generate the model. So we need a real, we, we can run the rose G model command to generate the model. And the model that we're creating is going to be a chat request model. And this is going to have a few things. So it's going to have a user belongs to. So this is the user that requested. Actually, there's going to be two users that belong to it. That's where it becomes a little bit more tricky because we need to use custom names. We can't just say user belongs to. We need to have a custom name. So instead, we're going to have a. Why don't we just say a from user? Which will be. Why don't we do a from user ID? Which will be integer. And then a two user ID, which is an integer. So there's a store the IDs for these both users. And then we can have an accepted Boolean, which will default to false. Or actually will default to nil. Because if they accepted it false, then that means that they didn't accept it. I think this looks good. And you'll see what I'm doing with the integers. So what I'll what I'm gonna do later. Let's generate the model. Let's migrate the database. And let's start the server. So we now have a chat request model. But if we go and check out the models folder chat request, you'll see it doesn't say that it belongs to anything. And that's because we didn't do the belongs to. Instead, I used an ID. But we can define that belongs to relationship ourselves. So I'm going to set up the belongs to from user, right, belongs to from user as, I still have to remember how to do this actually. So it's a, I'm gonna look this up real quick. Uh, have a belongs to with a different name than the model. That's all I'm trying to do. Ruby on Rails. I know it is super easy. I look at it, belongs on sender, belongs to recipient. 
and then see it has the matching ID as integer and let the do Rails do the wiring. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So all we have to do is belongs to our from user, set the class, which is a user class, and then belongs to to user, the class is also the user. Now, I don't know if I like from user to user. You could also say like requested by or requested. See, like I was trying to do something like that, but I think I'll just leave it as this because this is a little bit easier to understand at least which one's which. And of course, the accepted Boolean, we don't have to worry about that. So now let's set up the association on the user model. We can do has many requested or has many oh yeah that's where it comes that's where it is a little bit tricky because you're gonna have many chat requests that you requested but there's also chat requests that are requesting you to chat so it has many requested chats I don't even know which one I would use and that's where it comes into more of like an English like a grammar kind of thing than even programming just kind of funny so if I have if a user has many chat requests those are probably the ones that they created the outgoing chat requests you could say as and I think you could put the the name that it's supposed to be Let me make sure I'm doing this right. As many, yeah, see this is how you do it. Class name, foreign, ID, foreign key, that's it. Uh, so let's go back to user. The foreign key is going to be from user ID, and the class is chat request. So that's how you do it. And then here, this will make it so much easier. Sent, you can say sent chat requests. Foreign key is from user ID, class chat request, and then we can have many received chat requests. Foreign key to user ID, class chat request. There we go. Now, I don't even know if this will work correctly. But yeah, I mean, hopefully. So inside of the create action now, on chat requests, what we'll do, I'll move this user into a before action. Let's set the user, Let's do before action, set user, and then I'm gonna add that in a private section down at the bottom. Set user, drop the code in. Now we can reduce the new action into a one liner if you want to, you don't have to. Now we're gonna create a new chat request. So I think what I'll do is I'll do it off the current user. So we can say current user, I don't even know if we can do it that way. It might be better just to say chat request equals chat request dot create. And then the two user, I don't even know if we could do this. Two user is user, from user is current user. Send the chat request. Cool. And then let's just redirect back to. I uh, basically, I just want to like. Oh, yeah. When you're done, why don't we bring you back to the chat request index? Chats, chat requests, path. And then we can even do a nice notice like your chat request was sent successfully was sent we will let you know if they accept it all right so now let's try to send our message and see what happens and we get this error big old error that's good because i had no idea if that was going to work it said unknown key class valid keys are class name all right that's all it is uh, i have to change that key Let's go to user, and it wasn't class, it's actually class name. 
Last name. All right. Cool. Let's try this again. So if I try to chat with this guy, send my message. Oh, we got another unknown key class. Whoops. So I fixed it in the user, but I still have to fix it in the chat request. It's not class. It's actually class underscore name. Let's reload. Look at that. The chat request was sent. But the weird thing, why did it, it, it redirected it back to the new page. I tried to tell it to, I swear I said redirect to chats underscore chat request path. It should have been, oh, there is no chat request path. It's just the chats path. Whoops. Alright. Anyways, we sent the request. One thing is there's no way to tell, like we just sent a request to Indigo Tech, right? But now it's giving us the option to send a chat again. So we need to fix that. We need to show them that the request is pending. So what we can do, we can even do that on the user search user partial. So right here we have a link to chat with them. Let's just have a condition. Like if if current user dot Requested chats dot where to user ID is the user dot ID. And maybe we should say instead of dot where dot find by. Then that'll return nil if it doesn't find it. Let's end this out. So if we can find a matching chat request, we're going to show something else. For now, I'll just show P. Your chat request was sent. Let's reload. Uh, we get an error. Undefined method requested chats for an instance of users. Right. I don't even think that's what I called it. On the user, it was sent chat request. So let's fix that. Sent chat request. Fine. Bye. Let's reload. Do the search. Oh, it works perfectly. Check it out. Your chat request was sent. Your chat request was sent. Let you know if it's accepted. Well, I think that's way too much text. <laughs> it's like a giant amount of text. Uh, one option is to do a div class flex flex call and just stack them on top of each other. P class X small. Check that out. We will let you know if it's accepted. Now, if I want to talk to another Indigo though, I could just click here, be like, bro, send the message. And now I, I'm basically requesting everybody. There you go. So we just added in the option to search for users to chat with. Oh, look, look what happens when you when you search with nothing in it. It actually shows all the users. That's kind of helpful. All right, but now we need to add in the chat requests. Right, so let's say, like, I haven't even added this in. Wait, also, I think I just chatted with my, I sent a chat request to myself. Because I'm Indigo too. Look, I literally sent a chat request to myself. So that's another thing we could fix. I don't want to show myself in the users to chat with. That's actually so easy. All we have to do is go to wherever we're rendering those users, which I think is the new. So if we go to chats, uh, user search, wait, where is it now? It's the user search controller. If we're going to chat's user search, here's where we're setting users, user where, username like. So we need to, first of all, totally, we can do a, a first query before we do that one. So we can say where not, where, so where dot not, and then pass in, uh, yeah, 
where the username is not the current user dot username. Or actually, let's not do it by username. That's that's less uh, secure than just saying the ID. Or not less secure, but less problematic, I guess. So where not the user, the ID is the current user ID. And then we're going to search by the username. So let's see if that works. Type in Indigo. As you can see, it no longer shows my name in the search. Amazing. That's all I needed. Cool. So now if I want to show chat requests, that's pretty important. So we're going to hop into that section of the video. And I'm going to go split screen. Or not split screen, but I'm going to grab another window. And oh, I can already see there's a bit of styling issues on mobile. You add some padding real quick on the chat request new. To add a PX4. Take care of that mobile styling, although I don't think that's even on this page. Although we probably will need it too. So let's go to user search index, or no, chats index. Add the PX4, reload. There we go. All right. So now I'm going to open up a new incognito window. So I can have two instances of the app open at once. And I'm going to have to create a new account for this. Let's sign up. And boom, we are now signed in as a new user. So I'm going to try to make a request to Indigo2, which is over here. I'll click chat. Say, hey, bro. What's up? And I'll send message. So look, your chat request was sent. Perfect. So now on the left side, I want to be able to display the chat requests and respond to them. All right, so now we will build out the UI to display the chat requests for users who do have chat requests. So we just sent a request from the screen on the right side over to the left side. So this user, Indigo2, should have a new chat request. So I'm going to go over to the chats index in the view and let's get started on this functionality. So what I'll probably do is I'll add in the link to the chat requests. Uh, I kind of want to add it on top of the form so we can just display how many chat requests you have. So we're going to put the div right between the, the h1 and this div for the form. So let's add a new div. And I'm going to give this some margin, just a little bit margin top. And then we can even reduce the margin top on the form. And then inside of here, we would have our any action buttons that we want to have on top of the form. So for me, I'm going to put this link to so the chat request. And we can put the count in too. So this would be the current user dot requested. Wait, what did I call it? I think I called it received chat request. We can double check by going to the models and the user.rb. As you can see, I set up the has many sent chat requests and it also has many received chat requests. So all we have to do is I'll wrap this whole div for now. Actually, we don't have to do that. Uh, let's wrap just the link. So I could even do it a one liner, which means I add an if at the end. Although this probably is not going to be the cleanest way to do it. So I'll just do it with the standard if statement. So if current user received chat requests dot any. So if the user has any chat requests, then we will show the link. Otherwise, we just won't show anything. And then it'll say link to this many. So however many chat requests you have, chat requests. Or we can even just call it requests. And then this is going to go to a new path that we should define. So we don't have a path for receive chat requests. We do have this chat request folder, but I'll probably just add in a new route. So let's go over to config routes and take a look at what we have so far. So we have this namespace chats, and then we have a couple resources already. So I'm actually just going to add another one resources receive chat requests, and we're only going to do an index action. Cool. So this is going to show, this is just going to be a simple page you can go to, to view your received chat requests. And I am creating like, you guys might think that this is too many controllers, 
because I have a controller for like each action and we're only using create. It is possible to have a controller with custom names outside of CRUD. But the cool thing about Rails is that it kind of just has these CRUD functionalities. And if you don't know what CRUD is, it's create, read, update, delete. It's, it's what makes up all of these standard names, like the new, create, index, edit, update. All of those things are part of the CRUD cycle. But you could totally say, you know, I don't want to do CRUD. I just want to have a def, like, my cool action. You could totally do that, too. I just find that it's a little bit easier to maintain an app if you separate your features into their own namespace. All right, so now let's create that new controller. So inside of the controllers folder and the chats controller, we're going to create a new file and we will call it received chat request controller.rb. And inside of here, we are going to add the module for chats and then a class for received chat request controller. And this is going to inherit from application controller. Then we're going to have a simple index action. I'm pretty sure that's how I set it up in the routes. So if you go back to configure us to RB, yep, we have this resources receive chat request only index. And now we can go back to the chats page and fill in the URL. So when you click on the link to the request, it will go to chats underscore received chat requests path. There we go. And then we can add a little bit of styling. I'm kind of imagining this as a purple button for some reason purple button, light purple, into rounded full. All right, let's see if this works. So we can test it out by reloading. Oh, <laughs> look, it's, so that's kind of wrong. I think what's happening is we're just passing in the receive chat request, which is actually just a collection of records. We need to say dot count, because that's really what we wanted to return is the count of the records. And if we reload, now we see this two requests. All right, cool. I think the reason why I was seeing this button is because I think that's kind of how Instagram styles it. I don't, know. I don't think they use a button. I think they just used some text. Now I'm going to do ML auto because I want this button to be on the right side. Let's reload. That didn't work. So on this div, let's do width full flex justify end and then we can remove the ml auto because the justify end will already be doing that come out of here there we go now this button is showing up correctly and on the right side since i don't have any chat requests on the right side we don't see the button it's only on the left cool now when you do click this as you can see there is an error because we're missing a template so all we have to do is add a template of course and to do that, we're going to go to the views chats. We need a new folder to match that new controller name, received underscore chat requests. And then inside of this folder, we can create a new file for the index action. So we're going to call it index.html.erb. And boom, that's all you got to do. Now we have the received chat requests. So inside of here, I'm just going to grab some of this styling right here from another page. And I'm basically just repeating the styling every time. And then at the top, let's just say your received chat requests. Cool. So that's what this page is all about. And then underneath, let's have a div. Give it some margin. And I'm going to do flex, flex call, gap two or gap four. And I'll also give it a max width, max width 2XL with full. MX auto, although we don't really need the MX auto because we have item center. Now inside of this div, I'm going to render the received chat request. So to do that, I'm going to access the current user dot receive chat request dot do. And actually I was going to loop through, but I guess I might as well just render a partial. Uh, so we could instead, we could render partial uh, chat underscore request and then we'll pass in the collection the receive chat request now one thing is it'll try to use the name of the collection uh, for the partial it'll try to like singularize this which would mean it's expecting received underscore chat request 
So we want to change that with as. We can say as chat request so that it will use the right variable name when it's rendering the partial. So this is basically instead of looping over and rendering a partial, you can just do it with one call, which is a little bit cleaner. Actually, a lot of it cleaner. You save like three lines or something. And now we're going to need the matching partial. So we're going to put it right inside of the receive chat request. We'll do a new file underscore chat request dot b. And inside of this partial, we can do our styling for the chat request. So I'm just going to do with full rounded large bg gray 200. And I'll do a p inside of it. And I'll say. At request dot from user dot username because remember we use the to user from user so I know that from user means the person who requested to chat with me so say this user wants to chat with you all right now let's come back to here reload and boom just like that <laughs> look you can see uh, from when I tried to chat with myself <laughs> It's actually still showing that, which is kind of funny. I'm going to add some padding real quick around this. The padding always helps. Just P2. Now it's not going to be as scrawny. You reload. See? A little bit more bulky of a card. So this is pretty sweet already. This is really... This is cool. Okay, so this guy, they wants to chat. Maybe I'll make that a little... I'll get rid of the with you. Or say wants to chat. And then... What I'll do is I'll add, basically, like, you can accept it or you can decline it. So we just need some icons for that. Cool. So I'm going to go over to Hero Icons. I think I'll probably just get a thumb. I think they do have thumbs up. There we go. So we can get ourselves a thumbs up if you do want to chat with them. Thumbs down if you don't. So what I'll do now is on that chat request partial, I'm going to add a flex class. Justify between. So we'll have this message at the front or at the on the left side, then on the right side we'll have the buttons. So add another div, give it a class flex, gap to item center. And inside of this div, I'll add our SVG. Although I'll probably wrap this in a link too. And this is the one for accepting. So I'm just gonna do pound sign. Now, this is when you accept the request. So let's go back. Uh, hold up. I guess I just have to close out of here. Reload. All right, cool. Now we have a thumbs up. And if I want to, let's say, fill that with green, bright green thumbs up. Oh, uh, that's funny. So when you fill it, there's actually a little bit of space that gets missed which is why you might want to use the solid one because I'm using an outline. You can get the solid one if we go back, click solid. The same exact SVG, except for now it's fully solid. And we could do with the text instead of fill, we can just do text green 500. Reload. Now we have this green icon. So that's pretty cool. And we can make it do the hover effect scale 105. It gets slightly bigger. Look at that. It does work. You can kind of barely notice, but it does work. And we can grab, I'm just going to copy this really to do the one for the thumbs down. I'll put this, the thumbs down would be first. Or should thumbs down be second? Let's make it second. And then I need the thumbs down icon. I'm going to copy that, drop it in, and I'm going to make this one red instead of green. I'm still going to do the scale effect. Cool. So I think that's good for the icons. You can leave that site. All right, there we go. So this is kind of a vibe now. I do want to add more spacing because I, I think it's pretty important to not click the wrong one. We should make it. It's easy to not click the wrong one, or it's easy to click the right one, I don't know. So let's add gap four, do a little bit more space. And then we could also, I'm thinking about adding a hover effect on the link. 
So let's add a class here. Do like a P2 rounded full. Hover BG Gray 500. This was just an idea from my head. Yeah, actually that's pretty good in my opinion. So when you hover it actually shows like the whole circle around the icon. And then when you click, it might even be cool to make that that backdrop start like moving and changing colors and warping, but that's more that's when you get into like the advanced front end stuff, which I don't really care too much to get into right now. I think this is already pretty fancy. <laughs> And when you click, so now when you click one of these, you're basically responding to the chat request. So what I'm thinking is, well, what it is, it's accepted, right? So when you click, you're either accepting it, you're setting that Boolean. If you remember on the chat request, we have accepted as a Boolean. It can be true or false, or it can be nil if you didn't respond. So right here, when you click, you're setting either true or false. So what I'll do is, I think we can just, do this inside of the receive chat request controller. See, so I'm gonna end that index. Now let's add a create action. And this is where we will respond. So what we'll say is we can find the chat request equals, right, like, let's handle this after, <laughs> actually. Let's go back to the views underscore chat request. And now let's set up the link. Actually, I think we still need to permit that create action in the routes. Yep, if we go to config routes on the receive chat request, we're only permitting the index. So I have to allow the create. Now we have the route for create. So inside of this underscore chat request partial, I'm going to set the, the URL for these links. So what I'll do is I'll set this to chats received chat requests. The funny thing is it's it's actually the same thing as the index path. The only difference is we're going to make a post request instead of a get request. Now, as far as the parameters, um, I think the only thing we need to pass in is the user that you're sending it to. So the chat request dot from user. So let's just call it from user ID. And we'll pass it in like this. And then I'm going to set accepted to true. So you can see I'm actually just going to be doing this through the URL parameters, which might not be the best way of doing it, but it works pretty well for me. And then for the thumbs down, I'm going to set accept to false. Now to make this do a post request, I'm going to come here to the end of the links. I'm going to do this to both links at once by pressing alt and clicking. That's the hotkey on VS code at least. Press Alt and on Windows. So then when I go down a new line, I'm going to set the data turbo underscore method to make a post request. And there it is. That's all we need to turn our links into buttons that can submit requests to a server. All right. And now inside of this create action, why don't we find the user by doing user dot find by, or why don't we just do finds params from user ID. So that's the user. Now we have to find the chat request. Chat request equals also we don't have to make these instance variables. Those are only if you, you only need an instance variable if you want to view it on a if you want to use it in the view that you're rendering. But the create action doesn't render a view unless you respond with a turbo stream. We don't really need to do that. Now the chat request is going to be the current user we're going to search through the received chat request to find the right one for the user. So current user received chat request dot, let me just say find from user ID. Oh, actually, that's another idea. Instead of doing the whole search for the user, we could just <laughs> pass in the user ID. That's another idea. All right. Now we can respond to the chat request by doing update accepted params accepted just like that this is the most simple feature honestly although most this is what most features are like too when you're a full stack developer it's literally a lot of times just toggling something and then using that to do logic in the code the last thing that we're going to do though is redirect back 
Let's redirect back to chats. You can just bring them back to, hmm. Go back to the chats path, I guess. And we could say, we could do a notice, you accepted. And let's pass in, ooh, pass in chat request dot, from user dot username. So their request to chat. And I'm gonna do even the, is that, is that apostrophe, apostrophe S to show that it's their, like ownership of this word, I don't know. We're gonna redirect after we do this. Cool. So I did all that code. I have no idea if it works. I'm pretty sure it does. So now I'm gonna accept this chat now by pressing screen check. And what happens in the back end? It said couldn't find chat request with ID. Oh. It's because I did find. Find is expecting an ID. I need to switch that to find by. Right. Let's try this again. It said you accepted it, so I think it did work. The only thing is the count didn't change on my request. And the reason is because the scope, we're showing all the received chat requests when we should only be showing the ones that haven't been responded to. So to fix that, we could go to back to the chats index. And when we're checking about the current user received chat request, we just have to change the scope to the request that you haven't answered to, you haven't accepted or not accepted. So I might even create a new method on the user model so let's go to the model user.rb and I can create a new method that could be like, we could call it uh, received chat request. See, it's already called received chat request. So I need to call it like pending received chat request. All right, that's fine. And then what we're going to do is we can query the receive chat request dot where accepted is nil. So that's it. These are the pending received chat requests. <laughs> now what I can do is I can replace all of these places that we use that. Now, I don't know if this will have a negative effect because we are going to be calling this over and over again. Hopefully it should automatically cache. But I think you can also meta cache if you go like this, set an instance variable or equal. But I don't know if this would have a bigger effect on things. So I might just leave it like this for now. Now I'm going to, back on that chat's index, we can replace it in these two places. That should be fine. And if I reload now, okay, good. The count has updated. So now there's only one request, but when you come to the page, it's still showing, see, it's still showing the two requests, even though I already responded to this one. So what we need to do is go to receive chat requests, uh, index, and fix that. Instead of passing receive chat requests, we're passing ending receive chat requests. And there we go. We reload, it only shows the ones that need attention. Oh. All right, I'm noticing a few things. It looks like the, the user dropdown, the styling gets messed up on mobile. So let me fix that real quick. Let's go to the views layouts underscore nav bar. And on this div with absolute, we need to fix this for mobile. I think we can fix this by saying write dash zero. Try this out. Yep, that's fixed. Uh, it looks, it still looks good on the larger screen, but we can turn that off by adding a breakpoint medium. Actually, I don't even know what we'd change it to. Auto, possibly doing auto would 
put it back to, yeah, see, that puts it back to whatever it was. That's cool. But then on mobile, it still works. Nice. A little bit of UI improvements. Now when I click on this, I do kind of want it back button just in case because there's no way to go back without pressing the built-in back button. So maybe I'll add like a little back button on this receive chat request index. I'll do it right over the H1. And do another class flex. It actually doesn't need too much, but I might do march and bottom. Two. And then I'm gonna put a link to oops. Back to chats. This is gonna go to chats path. And then I'm gonna a little, just a little style to make the text larger. Let's reload. All right, that's pretty good, although it's in the center. I kind of expected it to be on the left. Oh, because I need to do width full on here. Although I think the width full might be a little bit too full. Because if we look, <laughs> when we resize, see now it's, it's taking up to full width. So I actually need it kind of in this width right here. So maybe I'll just do a div around the whole, all the content that adds this width. There we go. Let's reload. Whoops, I think I accidentally opened a terminal. All right, so now we have the back to chats. That's, yeah, that's just what I was envisioning. Works really well. Uh, one thing is it's your received chat request. That text is really large. We probably want to make that smaller on mobile. I think that's good.